Ah, uh, Resident Evil 4. Probably one of the most universally loved Resident Evil titles of all time and arguably has the best voice lines in the entire series. I've been expecting you, my brethren. No thanks, bro. <laughs> Resident Evil 4 was a game changer for the time. He ain't lying. It brought a beloved horror franchise that was once a fixed camera tight horror type of experience translated over to a third person horror adventure action title. RE4 is widely regarded as a masterpiece. In fact, Capcom has gone as far as remaking this game, which they just showed off recently. Now granted, I don't think this game warranted a remake. I think it still holds up to this day but it will be nice to see this game in a new, fresh coat of paint. However, modders have already done that. So oddly enough, back in April of 2021, Capcom unveiled during the Resident Evil Village Showcase, Resident Evil 4 VR, which was going to be a VR port of Resident Evil 4 for the Quest 2. Now I did find it weird that the Quest 2 of all VR platforms was getting this game as an exclusive, and I was also kind of worried about how this game of all of the Resident Evil games was gonna translate into first person. But holy shit, was I blown away by this game. It's beautiful. So let's pop on our headset, blast some Ganados, and let's save the president's daughter in Resident Evil 4 VR. So right off the bat with Resident Evil 4 VR, you'll notice that they did not take any sort of liberties away from this game. It is the classic Resident Evil 4 experience translated into VR. You get the entirety of Leon's campaign and because of one of the recent updates, you also get mercenaries mode included as well. Let's talk about Leon's campaign first. So of course, Resident Evil 4, this takes place six years after the events of Raccoon City. and We play as Leon, who's now a US government agent who sent on a secret mission to save the president's daughter. Of course, the story is all intact, but you're gonna be playing through every single experience you had back in the original Resident Evil 4, just in a first person view now. The El Gigante fights, the Del Lago fight, exploring Salazar's castle, even the minecart ride. All of those different experiences, the entirety of Leon's campaign is here, and it's a blast to experience. Hell, I'm playing this game that I've been playing since 2005, and I'm literally put inside of it. It's kind of mind-blowing when you think about it. And I honestly wish there were more VR ports of classic games like this. Let's talk a little bit more about the gameplay. So, in the original game, movement and combat were very concise. You had to have precision and planning when running through the Village of Horrors. In fact, the gameplay of Resident Evil 4 is still regarded as some of the best, most thought out gameplay we've had in recent generations. Movement, stopping whenever you've decided to take aim and place your shots at incoming enemies. That tension and slow movement of the original while still being an action game kept it more akin to the original games with its tank controls. It helps solidify what made the game itself a masterpiece. So how does that work in a VR headset? Well, all that stuff I just talked about precision movement, you can just kind of throw out the window because this goes into full VR movement territory. You're able to move freely in all directions, even while aiming your weapons at enemies. This game really makes you feel like Leon in those Resident Evil CG movies. And while this can be fun and somewhat adds way more action to what is already considered a more action-focused Resident Evil game, it can take a bit of tension away from the game in various moments especially later in the game once you've collected so many resources in your travels. It makes a lot of encounters you get into almost seem trivial. Like I said, the freedom of movement makes the game incredibly enjoyable, but sometimes you can just run around these group of enemies and bosses and destroy them like I did your mom last week. The game just becomes a breeze to get through. And since this is a VR game, you're not just going to be running around pulling your big iron out to shoot Texas Reds. You also need to find resources out in the world. And instead of pressing a button to open a door or a cabinet, you actually get to reach out and open different doors, turn cranks, and even get to interact with a typewriter that's used to save your game. 
Even the bell on the side of the typewriter is interactable. And every single time, I just had to ring this damn bell. So let's talk about how equipment is handled in this version of the game. But one of the first things that I noticed is being able to actually switch between your weapons and your equipment is way more accessible than the original game was. In the original, switching through your equipment would require you to go into your inventory and actually switch to whatever weapon you needed. In this version of Resident Evil 4, you have four slots available to you in your inventory, which show up on your character's body. But because of the freedom of VR, you're also allowed to dual wield in this game. And holy crap, it is so fun to do. So that's where I actually want to go ahead and talk about the new inventory system. Now, when I say new, I'm not meaning it's very different. However, the way that you're able to see your briefcase whenever you load up into the inventory, see your map, as well as even being able to check what key items and treasures you have looks incredible. I sometimes lose myself just flipping around and changing stuff up in the inventory. It's always been a mini game in the past and it still is here. And the treasure chest that's part of your briefcase that gives you a visual of all of the different treasures that you've collected with your time with leon and because of how this is presented i intentionally on my second third and even my fourth playthrough i challenged myself to collect every single treasure in the game so i could fill this baby up and of course resident evil 4 would not be the same without the merchant ah uh, come here old buddy it's so good to see you how you been in fact, the devs actually thought to show a little bit of love to the merchant by actually giving him his own shop, and the look of his shop will change depending on where you're at in place of the story. It's just a great small detail that I thought the devs added to this VR version of the game. Now I want to talk about the boss fights. A lot of the boss fights in the game haven't changed up too much from how they're originally played in the base game. However, one of the bosses that has the biggest change of all is Del Agro. Instead of hurling harpoons at it with your VR controller, Jesus. Armature Studios outfits you with a harpoon gun instead. Now at first, I didn't really like this change, but after a few playthroughs, I did enjoy using the harpoon gun a bit more. However, in the base game, it took around 20 harpoons to take down Del Agro. But in this one, it takes over 50 harpoon shots. <laughs> what the fuck? Plus, they also give you three different options of controlling the boat, which you only control the boat in this section and maybe the section after. But I think it's a welcome addition for that extra accessibility feature for certain players. Every other boss is pretty much the same. You'll still be fighting Krauser, the same as the other bosses. They're all pretty much the same as you would like them. However, speaking of Krauser and just Resident Evil 4 in general, do you remember when games had QTEs? If you don't know what QTEs are, those are quick time events. Resident Evil 4 made these fucking popular back in the day, and every single game had to do QTEs after Resident Evil 4. Now, based off of everything that I've showed you so far and how Armature has translated things into the VR experience, do you think that they took QTEs out of the game? I'll take a while again. No! Are you serious? In fact, if you've ever played the Wii version of Resident Evil 4, it's the same exact motions and controls for QTEs that we had back on that version. Now, this is one of my biggest gripes of the game because when I did get to the Krauser knife fight, I was trying to knife fight that man in the cutscene when it was playing. And man, that was a missed opportunity to make some of these QTEs at least a little bit more inclusive when it comes to the gameplay. Instead, for most QTEs, you're just flailing your arms up and down or swiping them left or right or pressing the triggers. It's nothing too wild. It's not that detrimental to the entire experience. However, I do feel like it is a missed opportunity in terms of gameplay factor. And I would say probably one more gripe I would have with this game is maybe the cutscenes. Now sure, going into the original engine of the game and trying to put the player into those cutscenes might have been a bit of extra work, but I totally get what they did and it makes a bunch of sense where they kind of just put you in front of a screen to watch the cutscenes of the game. Now it's not the most immersive thing that I've ever seen, but hey, it's better than nothing or having really janky cutscenes. One more thing I wanted to note, which is a positive, is that a lot of the glitches that you would find in the original game are present here on the VR port. In fact, you can glitch yourself out of the cart during that cart sequence in the later half of the game and skip the entire thing if you wanted to. And of course, there's a few other types of glitches that speedrunners may also be interested in. Now, let's talk about the graphics. How does a 2005 GameCube game translate into a VR experience where you're literally put in Leon's shoes and walking into the game world of Resident Evil 4? Well, thankfully, Armature Studios did go out of their way to upscale at least most of the textures in the game. 
a lot of the things that you'll see inside of this game are actually very nice to look at. A lot of the miscellaneous objects you'll find laying around in the world are upscaled. A lot of the buildings, ground textures, even stuff that's out in the distance, like trees, things like that, are upscaled to make it look a lot better. Now, it's not as good as the HD project that just came out a few months ago by a couple of modders, but... For a VR title and an upscale version of a 2005 GameCube game, this is very impressive. This is actually way better looking than the ultimate HD version that was released for PC and later consoles. And personally, I think it's one of the better looking games on the Quest 2. Again, this campaign is fully untouched. However, Facebook, Armature, or whoever made this decision, decided to cut some voice lines from the game. We all know that Resident Evil 4 has some of the most iconic voice lines of the series. And yet, they cut Small some world, of them. Eh? Well, I see that the president's equipped his daughter with ballistics, too. How rude! Small world, eh? Who are you? Oh, oh excuse me, your highness. Other than that, though, this campaign is fully untouched. It's fully Leon's campaign, and it is awesome to go through an experience in VR. In the original game, whenever you beat Leon's campaign for the very first time, you would unlock Mercenaries mode. Very recently, Mercenaries mode was actually added into the game as a free update. Now granted, it should have been there from the start, however, the developers took some time to not only include the original Mercenaries mode, including all of the original characters you got to play as with their loadouts and the original levels, but they also added challenges which includes 20 challenges and allows for different variations of the mercenaries mode that we've all come to know and love. Like Wild West, where you get to run around the village popping heads with two big irons. A vast ye matey, where you try to survive as long as you can, only equipped with a harpoon gun from the Del Lago fight. Or you want to try to survive as long as you can with infinite rockets? They have that shit too. There's so many different variations of gameplay and challenges available that gives this game a ton of replay value. And honestly, I keep finding myself coming back to Mercenaries mode over and over again. Now granted, Mercenaries is the only extra content that this game has. Of course, there is the shooting range that you can access from the main menu, but just having Leon's campaign, the range, and Mercenaries mode, I feel like is not enough. It is a bummer that we are missing both Assignment Ada and Separate Ways. I feel like it's a huge missed opportunity for them to not include both of Ada's campaigns on this game. But hey, maybe we'll see those down the line in a future update. So anyways, that's my take on Resident Evil 4 VR. I think it's a pretty solid port of a very classic Resident Evil title over to the Quest 2. However, I do wish this game was more available to all of the different headsets that are available. But anyways, thanks for checking me out and watching the video. Let me know in the comments what you think about Resident Evil 4 VR, or if you've played it before, let me know your experiences. Thank you for sticking around this long in the video, if you've made it this far. And also, thank you so much to the subscribers who followed me throughout the years and also have followed me over on Twitch. I know I rarely upload content here on YouTube, but I've had a lot of life changes. I'm now a dad, living that adult life, got a lot of things going on, so keeping up with the channel has been tough, but I'm going to try to start coming back here a lot more often. So expect more uploads, at least monthly instead of yearly. <laughs> And if you want to see me more often than not, check me out over on Twitch. I'm streaming every so often over on there, probably twice a week or more. So if you want to check me out on my Twitch channel, watch me play some stupid shit. We're back. And by all means, I'll see you over there. Ah! Keep it moving. Catch you on the next one.